guardrail is tested under very idealized conditions that can never be replicated in the field. So it's very important that we stick to the designer's drawings as close as possible. It's Steve the guardrail guy and I recently made a short here that um, has gotten several million views and it was related to these bolts right here, this installation defect. And I have gotten a ton of comments. One of the things that's really difficult with uh, YouTube success is that you can't respond to every single comment. So I came back out here and I got lost. But anyways, I finally found it and I wanted to answer some of those comments. First, and probably one of the more popular ones, is why are you commenting on those lights over there? It's like, why? You're talking about this guardrail. Well, I guess for me it's personal. Uh, my daughter was killed here in McMinn County. And I think that what happens is, is when we look at guardrail, most people think, well, it can't happen to me. And I felt the same way. But I highlighted the football field and the lights because I want you to realize could be your kid too. Uh, number two, it doesn't matter. The facts are it does matter. You know, I've been told when in the law, when you have the law, you pound the law. When you have the facts, you pound the facts. And when you have neither, you pound the table. And we have a lot of folks that just like to pound the table. They're ignorant and they don't know what they're talking about. You can go to the manufacturers, uh, webpage and they're very clear these always face outward some people will call this a cable anchor bracket a grabber bar i've heard people call it a bird cage i frankly do not care what you call it you can call it batman but it better be installed right or there can be catastrophic outcomes i'm going to let you take a look at a video from road systems where they talk about the use and show improper installation of this part Cable anchor bracket. This is the same one that we have used uh, since the SKT was introduced in 1997. It uh, has uh, special shoulder bolts, and you can see there's a washer that's uh, installed on both the sides of the rail. Uh, this is actually the washer here is what we call a captive washer. When this bolt is shipped, the washer is uh, permanently attached to the bolt so that we be sure that we can get a washer on both sides of the rail. Again, those rail uh, uh, shoulder bolts will remain in place. When the bracket is kicked away, the bolts will feed right through the impact head. Now this is uh, my SKT impact head. This is not the SKT rail, and this is not the SKT bracket. There's no slots. And you can see that that bracket is solid bolted to the rail. That's the problem. Here's another view looking at uh, the backside. Again, this is the wrong bracket. When the impact head travels down the rail and attempts to release the head from, or release the bracket from the rail, you can see here that uh, it would dig into the bracket and bring your impacting vehicle to a screeching halt. So th this is a problem. We need to be sure that we're using the proper shoulder bolts and the proper cable anchor bracket. The uh, third comment was, was I'd rather they be installed like this with uh, the bolt shanks not facing outward because of the potential for snagging. I ride a motorcycle or I don't want to see those tear into a car or I just don't, I think this is a better way. Well, the issue is you could invent your own guardrail system where it's like this and but here you got to follow the manufacturer's designs and drawings you don't get to just make it up and the reality is these are tucked in to the W so the probability of snagging with these is really very low so the fourth comment is well just don't hit them um, this is just pure ignorance the reality is and terminals are purchased by state DOTs for the purpose of mitigating impacts with guardrails. We place guardrails, which are a hazard, to protect against errant motorists. Um, and so the idea that just don't hit them, if we're gonna be spending 
thousands upon thousands of dollars on guardrail end terminals, well, they should be installed properly. Otherwise, we are misappropriating uh, federal and state funds. Um, you know, I just, I don't know how to make that any I sense. I want to discuss some ways how we could prevent this from happening in the future. This is not one of the more common mistakes that I find, but there are ways that we could prevent this from happening. One is installation training, installation training, and more installation training. We have to train on how to properly install these systems. The second thing would be to go back and have a physical hard copy of the installation manuals at every single install. When uh, you are relying on your past training, that may have been done by somebody who had been relying on past training, who was re taught by somebody, and pretty soon it's like a game of telephone. What we get on the roadside is nothing like what the manufacturer in the original installation uh, instructions tells you to do. So just have the hard copy at every single installation and follow the hard copy, not your memory. The final thing would be to do some stuff like here where we have special bolts. They have to be facing outward. Would be to color code those. Maybe it is to paint them bright blue. And if we have bright blue bolts hanging out facing traffic, we're going to notice that it's going to be a whole lot easier to fix it. So the use One of final consideration when we see an installation error like this is that when we make this mistake, we almost always make additional mistakes. And so that's one of my main concerns is when I see an installation error, I end up seeing lots of errors throughout the system.